What's up everyone, Brandon here from TruckSafe Consulting. In this video, we're gonna discuss DOT numbers and who specifically needs them. So stay tuned and if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button below so you can stay up to date on all of our new DOT compliance related content. if not the most fundamental concepts about regulated highway transportation is DOT registration. More specifically, who is regulated by the DOT and when do they need to register for a DOT number? Seems like a pretty basic question, but it's one that can trip you up if you're not careful. So what exactly do we mean when we talk about DOT registration? Well, generally speaking, when the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, which is the federal agency that regulates interstate motor carriers, uses the term DOT registration, it's most often referring to a US DOT number. US DOT, of course, stands for United States Department of Transportation, of which the FMCSA is a part. Now, as a preliminary matter, a US DOT number should be distinguished from other registrations and permits that motor carriers sometimes hold, including federal and state operating authorities, vehicle registrations, also known as license plates, and state-issued motor carrier authorities. The US DOT number itself is simply the means by which regulated motor carriers, as well as property brokers, freight forwarders, and in some cases shippers in the United States are identified as such by the FMCSA. It's an identification number issued by the FMCSA to those entities with which the agency associates those entities' registration details, such as their business names, addresses, FEINs, phone numbers, and for motor carriers, all of their safety-related data, such as roadside inspection violations. When it comes to motor carriers specifically, the general rule is that you need a US DOT number if you operate vehicles or combinations of vehicles, such as truck and trailer, that weigh more than 10,000 pounds, or those that haul placardable quantities of hazardous materials, or those that are designed to transport nine or more passengers in interstate commerce. Now, this is true both for four hire motor carriers and private carriers. And it's this latter group of carriers, private carriers, that tend to not realize that they too must register with the FMCSA and obtain a US DOT number if they operate the types of vehicles I just described in interstate commerce. A great example is a landscape company. If I own a landscape company that operates pickup trucks and trailers to haul my mowers or other equipment across state lines, and the combination of those two weighs more than 10,000 pounds, which is not that hard to achieve, then I'm considered a private carrier and I have to register with the FMCSA, get a US DOT number, and slap that DOT number on the sides of any trucks that meet the weight threshold, either singly or in combination. Now I'll talk briefly about the distinction between interstate and intrastate commerce and why it matters in a moment, but suffice it to say, if for the reasons mentioned you are required to have a US DOT number, obtaining one is a fairly straightforward process accomplished through an electronic application process through the FMCSA's Unified Registration System, or URS for short. Now, in terms of interstate versus intrastate commerce, the reason it matters is because it dictates whose rules as between the federal and state governments apply. As a general proposition, if you're a motor carrier and you operate in interstate commerce and you're subject to the federal rules, those promulgated by the FMCSA. But if you're a motor carrier that operates only in intrastate commerce, then you may very well not be subject to the federal rules. With that said, it's critical to know that every state in the country has, to some extent, adopted the federal motor carrier safety regulations as part of their own state law and made them applicable to intrastate carriers operating within their borders. Practically, what this means is that even if I'm a motor carrier that never operates across state lines, I may still need a US DOT number depending on how my state has adopted the federal rules and whether it has made those state specific changes to those rules. For example, motor carriers that operate in intrastate commerce in Indiana, my home state, are still required to register with the FMCSA and obtain a US DOT number. But Indiana's motor carrier laws are a bit different from the federal rules and how they apply that requirement. So unlike the federal rules, which apply to interstate, for hire, and private carriers at the 10,000 pound threshold alike, 
Indiana says that intrastate for hire carriers need a US DOT number if they operate vehicles weighing more than that 10,000 pound threshold, but intrastate private carriers only need one if they operate larger vehicles or combinations that weigh more than 26,000 pounds. So the takeaway is that if you operate exclusively in intrastate in a particular state, you have to consult your state motor carrier safety rules to determine what registration requirements apply and when they apply. The last point I'll make on interstate and intrastate commerce is that it's unfortunately a bit more complex than whether vehicles or drivers physically cross state lines. The way the FMCSA and courts have defined interstate commerce over the decades is broader than that. Essentially what matters to the analysis is whether the freight that is being hauled is moving in a continuous stream of interstate commerce rather than the vehicles or the drivers themselves. So for example, if I'm a driver that's picking up a load of freight from a distribution point in Indianapolis, Indiana and delivering it to its destination in Fort Wayne, Indiana, I may still be engaged in interstate commerce if that freight had originated outside of Indiana prior to me picking it up at the distribution facility in Indianapolis. For this reason, the universe of motor carriers that are regulated by the FMCSA and which require US DOT numbers is much larger than it may seem at first blush. So that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you found it useful. Be sure you check out our website at trucksafeconsulting.com where you'll find all kinds of educational materials on these types of topics, including our ebook, which provides a high level summary of all of the federal safety regulations. And if you're interested in even more in-depth training on these regulations, make sure you take a look at our online courses over at trucksafeacademy.com. As always, thanks Thanks for watching.